underwater animals. Henry's Law. After months of exploring the deepest reaches of space, our heroic captain is heading home in his trusty ship. Uh, Henry, who are you talking to? Ah, greetings, fellow Earthling. I, the great Captain Henry, have gone where no lizard has gone before. Wow, into outer space? That must have been real exciting. Actually, no. No one else had gone there before either. I didn't meet one strange new life form. So now I'm going home. Stand by for re-entry. Hey, what's with all the blue stuff? That's not home. Uh, that would be the ocean? I must have got my calculations wrong. You never were very good at math. Uh-oh, green alert. We're headed for the water. Better make that underwater, Henry. You're sinking. Whoa! Batten down the hatches! Reverse engines! And close that window. Don't run away now, Henry. You wanted to meet strange life forms and explore new worlds. Underwater is just the place. Excuse me. On boring old Earth? What could be unexplored here? Only most of the planet. Three quarters of it is covered in water. We know more about what's in space than what's in our own oceans. You mean, there might be aliens living down here? Yikes! Or flying saucers with tails! <laughs> no, those are rays, Henry. Flying saucers with ray guns! Even worse! No, bat rays. They're not from outer space. But like most underwater animals, they seem alien to us because they're so different. I'll say. your face. Gulp? You can say that again. Whoa! All underwater animals have adapted to their unique environment with their own ways of feeding, getting around, and breathing. Well, I won't breathe easier until I find a way home. Looks like you're having trouble there, Henry. I'll never get home if I can't get this tub under control. How are you going to travel down here? Traveling underwater requires a special skill. I do have a license, you know. Ah! Hey, it's working! Set a course for home! Don't you think some underwater driving lessons would help first? Nah. What do I... Whoa! No fair. You distracted me. That doesn't take much. Say, it's those flying saucer rays again. Bat rays, Henry. Though they do kind of fly. That's how they move around underwater. By flapping their wings and gliding. Are they related to birds? Sharks, actually. But they often travel in groups like a flock of birds. The largest rays are enormous, wide enough to carry three people laying head to toe. That's amazing! Look at them all! It often helps underwater animals to travel in large groups. Because they get a group discount on meals? <laughs> Not exactly, but it can help them avoid becoming a meal. It's harder for predators to pick out individuals from a huge school of fish. School? So even fish need driving lessons, huh? Nope. Individual fish in a school or group copy the movements of the others, changing direction in a flash. And by swimming close behind one another, the water current pulls them along more easily. So they use less energy. Smart fish! 
Of course, some underwater animals don't swim at all. Or even move. Don't bet on it. Hey, you speeded that film up. And those starfish must have little wheels under there. That's cheating. Starfish actually have hundreds of little tentacles under their bodies to pull them around as they search for prey. Looks like a wrestling match for lunch. Excuse me, what's that spider doing underwater anyway? It's a sea spider, to be precise. A distant relative of land spiders. I can see that. But what's he doing? The breaststroke? Who's supposed to be the funny one around here? I don't know. But when you find him, tell him there's still a vacancy. Why are you at a... Henry, Henry, it's time for your news report. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way! Journal Lizard coming through! Tonight! Birds still sneezing after hay fever season. And Cheeky Monkey tells Press, no comment. But now, our top story. Police stop fish stealing air from the land. After following a trail of red herrings, investigators discovered the villain responsible. Fish finger. His plan included putting all the air in tanks, hiding it underwater, and only letting fish breathe from it. A case of air today, gone tomorrow. Police were tipped off when they found fin prints on a getaway vehicle. But land animals can rest easy tonight. Knowing that Fishfinger is safely behind bars. Looks like the scales of justice triumph again. You think they bought it? You couldn't even give it away, Henry. Rats. The truth is, all underwater animals need oxygen to breathe, but only a few get it from air. Ha! I caught that turtle stealing air! He's just coming up to the surface for a breath. Even turtles can't stay underwater forever. Others, like this water scorpion, are a little more inventive. That's amazing! It's like he's breathing through a snorkel! Very good, Henry! And that spider has a diving helmet! Say, two out of two. Have you been reading the scripts in advance? Mm, there's a first time for everything. Then you'll know this spider takes its own supply of air underwater with it, spinning a silk net to hold a big bubble in which to breathe. Oh, sure, I knew that. I'm no airhead. <laughs> Neither are fish. Like most underwater animals, they actually get their oxygen by breathing water, not air. Hmm, breathing water. Sounds fishy to me. No, water has oxygen in it too. Fish take in water and run it through their gills, where they filter out the oxygen they need. Like lungs for fish. Exactly. Some fish, like this shark, need water constantly moving through their gills in order to breathe at all. Whoa, slug alert! Nudie Branks. Same to you. Can you see where they breathe from, Henry? It's hard to with all those spiky things. That is how they breathe. Nudie Branks can absorb more oxygen by breathing through their skin. That's amazing. I wonder how you can tell when they're holding their breath. Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Our dashing hero speeds through his new underwater world, searching for the way home. He is prepared for anything. His trusty ship is armed with the latest anti-sea creature weapons. A shark repelling foam blaster. An octopus ink jet spray. And of course, the world's biggest water cannon. Nothing will stand in the way of our invisi... fizzy... Invincible. Thanks. Invincible hero. My hero. Uh, excuse me. Hello? If you want the perfect underwater fighting machine, Henry, look no further than the shark. Now, where did I put my shark repellent? It wouldn't work. Sharks were hunting 200 million years before the dinosaurs were even around, and they've gotten pretty good at it. Which makes you wonder why these guys are jumping in with them, really. We know so little about sharks. Getting closer is the only way we can learn more. What's to learn? Sharks are big, they've got unlimited teeth, and they can smell their prey from up to 10 miles away. That's true. See? The only thing I'd need to learn is how to get away from them faster. Sharks don't really deserve such a bad reputation. Right. That's why these guys are hiding in a cage. Oh, most of the time sharks are just as scared of you as you are of them. They must be pretty scared then, because I'm terrified. Often the sharks you see on film have been baited with fish and meat, so they'll attack and look scary for the camera. Mostly, they live on smaller prey. I'm still smaller than that fish. The octopus also has an amazing range of weapons up his sleeve. Which one? The left one? The right one? The top one? Smart guy. And he's gonna need them? Octo guy versus mad moray eel! The octopus uses suckers on his tentacles to grip the rock firm for the fight. But the eel's strong jaw is just as powerful. Cool! He used a smoke screen! The octopus sprays ink to confuse its attacker and escape, but it might be too late. Now it's a tug of war! And Octoguy wins! He may have lost a tentacle, but he's not completely armless. Get it, sucker? Oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs>